Today's video is to help some lemmings out there improve their lives. What's happening? NJRoot22.com here with a, this is a societal video, a general help video for the times we are living in. It's about the compliance. In reality, compliance is a faggy way of saying you are following orders. You got to always use critical thinking and common sense. Otherwise, you're, you're pretty much doomed, okay? Just think of all the other times in history when they slowly boiled the frog and they kept tightening the, the, the bolts on, on society and then everything went downhill. This country is no exception. Don't think just because things are going okay or they've been okay for the last hundred years that this won't rapidly change. So I have seven ways that a little exercises you can do, especially if you're already a compliant person following all the rules and walking in the line and all this other stuff. So let's start off with number one. This is an easy one. This is traffic signaling. I see so many people out there who obey the traffic laws. They, they, they signal everywhere. They even at the end of a dead end street in the middle of a desert, they'll, they'll signal or I'm mean, not a dead end street, a stop sign in the middle of a desert. You can't see cars for miles. They're going to use their turn signal. And I see a lot of people, and this gets me in the, like a left turn only lane. They're sitting at a stoplight and their, their blinkers on. Like we know you're in the left turn lane. I mean, why do you need to, to do that? I mean, I'm not saying I never signal. I do signal, but that's as a courtesy to my fellow driver behind. Let's say I'm on a crowded highway and I want to change lanes and there's not much space between the cars. I'll signal uh, pretty well in advance to make sure that, and then once there's a, a communication established, th they might make room for you and you can get in in front of them and so on. But if there's a hundred car spaces ahead of uh, between me and the next car around, I'm not signaling. There's, it's stupid. It's just following orders. Signal only to protect yourself and the other driver. 99% of all other signaling is for wussies. The same thing goes for the speed limit. Yes, it's a lot of driving stuff here. The speed limit is, is something that I guess people, when I grew up, there was, the people weren't really scared of the speed limit. I mean, maybe technology now and all these radar guns that cops have, they're really good now and they can nab you and they're going 0.05 over the, the speed limit. But what I'm seeing more and more these days is people literally following it exactly. The speed limit's 45, they go 44 and a half miles an hour. There's a road I travel on frequently. It goes from 45 to 35 to 25. There's a little community there that they, they slow down the speed limit for like, oh, I don't know, 100 feet. And then it goes back to 35, 45, and 50 down the road. This person I was following behind uh, yesterday, they drove, they drove exactly the speed limit the whole way. And then when the, sign, the next sign was a little bit lower, they went down 10 miles an hour. And they went 10 down. I'm like, oh my God, it it's just feels suffocating to be stuck behind someone who is driving precisely the speed limit. My suggestion for you, my little exercise is, you know what, pretend there's no speed limit sign at all. Drive what makes you feel comfortable. You really have to try hard to not look at those signs, especially if you, you know, you're an obedient slave. Um, just drive what makes you feel right. If you have a nice car, you might be able to drive a little bit faster. You know, small cars actually handle well on, on curvy roads, drive the speed you feel comfortable at, regardless of what that stupid sign says, and then you're going to be on your way to releasing the grip that is on you. And this is a big one. Number three is political correctness. Um, we don't tell racy jokes or we're not, we try not to be insensitive here on this public channel because there is, uh, there are community rules and guidelines to deal with. But in re private life, I am the least politically correct person that you might meet. I don't give a flying beep. Uh, I'm doing that because I'm playing in somebody else's yard here and I'm trying to be respectful. Anyway, and back when I was growing up, I remember encountering a lot of people that would tell racy jokes, off-color jokes, you know, call them racist jokes or not. They could be ethnic jokes, whatever you wanted to call them, stereotypical jokes. And no one got bothered by, it, at least visibly, I mean, out of a thousand people that you'd see around these, these, you know, loud mouth, profane people, maybe one out of a thousand would get offended. And that was usually an old lady, you know, nagging, sagging, church going lady would get offended. But most people didn't get offended. Today, the opposite is true. 
of people get visibly upset if you tell an off-color joke. Like sometimes I'll go, I'll go to a store and if someone says something that's funny, fun, like something that I find funny, I'll go, oh, that's what she said. That was funny. I was on The Office. You remember Michael, uh, whatever, Scott did that. Um, they would get a, they would, they would become uncomfortable if you tell even a mildly innuendo or sexual innuendo uh, joke. And it's just getting out of control. Stop being politically correct. Be yourself. Speak your mind. If you want to use a foul word, go ahead. If you want to call somebody an ethnic slur, go ahead. It's no big deal. I mean, you can refer to people any way you want. It shouldn't be offended. Stop being politically correct. That's groupthink, and they're going to get everybody like homogenized into one. Like I guess they call them NPCs these days. NPCs, just to, uh, whatever. And number four here, this is government mandates. I, I'll just point out one quick thing here. I was out visiting a family member the other day. I was in the middle of nowhere, and somebody was walking down the street by themselves, nobody around for hun nobody around for miles, wearing a mask. That should say enough. If you if you are that type of person that follows this kind of rule. You got to stop. If you're in the middle of nowhere, take the damn thing off. If you really think you, you're afraid of this thing, but in the middle of nowhere, come on. And number five here, it's uh, all this uh, recycling and environmental stuff. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not into that at all. And they get you, though. First, they, they, they can only put out the garbage on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and recycling is on Wednesdays. And you know, they have to separate stuff. They get, they get you doing this, this slave work of separating your freaking garbage. And I know some crazy liberal cities actually make you separate them into clear glass, green glass, brown glass. And like they have all these people, like little lemmings, doing this crazy slave labor. For them, the, the taxpayers are paying the government. They're making you do all the work. It's like ridiculous. I just shove my stuff in, the, in a can. I don't give a crap. They're never going to be able to find out that I didn't recycle. I don't want to recycle. I'm not going to do it. And that's too bad. You can unsubscribe if you don't like me for not recycling my glass. It's a big scam. And number six, another thing that, that's bugged me in the last year, at least, is I see all these supermarket signs. They make people walk in a maze, like, like little rats. Oh, you got to walk this way, and then you got to walk that way. No, I'm not following rules like that. I'm, I'm absolutely not. I'm just going to walk the way I feel like walking, the way I've always walked in these stores, and I'm not changing my routine and, uh, because they have arrows on the ground telling me which way to go. The only time it makes sense to follow directions when you're walking is up a freaking escalator. I mean, I'm not going to walk up the down escalator. That's stupid, unless you're just a drunk idiot and you want to fall down and get a million views on YouTube. But that's the only time it makes sense because it's functional. Doing this stupid walking around crap, forget it. And number seven, I mean, I have a hundred more, and this is social distancing. I think that's a, just an awful thing, an awful thing. And I've seen a lot of videos online about people getting all freaked out. They lose their shit because they can't um, handle being close. To them. They know nothing. They know nothing. They think this magic number is something just, I say, ignore it. Do it like you walk around wherever you decide to go exactly the way you always did. You never thought about the next person or how close they were to you. I mean, obviously, you don't want to be a creep and stand an inch behind somebody. That's, that's just personal space. Everybody has like a little bit of personal space that you should respect. But don't, don't worry about whether, whether people just mind your own business, go shopping, don't care about who is around you, and you will be fine. That is it. And oh, by the way, if, you're, if you don't like these stupid masks and you're in a situation where you have to uh, wear one to keep your job, there's a website called Minimally Compliant Masks. You might like it. This isn't sponsored by them at all. I just think it's an interesting company. They make masks that, that are very easily breathable and they will allow you to pass the sniff test if so, if to walk into a store without getting harassed, but they're fully breathable and so on. So check it out. Minimally Compliant Masks. Dot com. I'll have a link in the description if you want to check them out. They're a cool company to deal with. So have a great day.